So a few weeks ago, we covered Steve-O's appearance on Two Bears, One Cave, where he essentially called out Burt Kreischer for being in complete denial about his drinking. And although things did get pretty awkward, it was very interesting to watch. And it now seems like Steve-O went to YMH Studios with the goal of calling out both Burt Kreischer and Tom Segura. Because while he was there, he also did that, uh, Danny Brown's podcast and decided to take some shots at Tom while doing the show. Which is very interesting because keep in mind that Steve-O is one of the few comics or podcasters that has been open about following all the dumb drama and lore that has been happening in the comedy world and the stand and the comedy and podcast world. For example, he followed everything that happened with Brendan Schaub. So that means that he's probably fully aware of everything that has been happening to Tom Segura and how his fan base has been slowly turning on him after he lashed out at his own fans and had some pretty wild public meltdowns. Dude, Danny, let me take a moment to compliment the way that your podcast is produced. I mean, I'm looking at like the skeletons of the dogs coming up behind <laughs> us. They've got this cool, it's always a cool <laughs> background. Like, dude, you're, you're, this YMH Studios is doing you right. Yeah, they are shots out to the Booth Boys, man. They don't get enough credit, man. These because work long hours, man, producing a lot of shows, man. So they really the backbone of this shit, man. So I give all credit to the Booth Boys, man. Is there any money left over for you, Danny? Huh? Is there any money left over for you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing. I'm guessing there's probably not that much money left over for the guys in the booth either. Oh, it's man. all Tom and Christina just running around, <laughs> getting on private jets, uh -huh. making fun of poor people. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. All right. <laughs> Next up. <we> <laughs> Everybody, everybody's out here busting their ass, making this beautiful art and dumpster diving. <laughs> <laughs> the booth are out there busting tables after work. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. We got kids for clout. Hey, Danny. <laughs> Recently, I've been seeing a lot of white girls post. Now, first of all, obviously, Steve-O was joking around. I'm sure he doesn't hate Tom Segura for making money. But the interesting thing is that there's always some truth behind every joke. And in this case, there's a lot of truth. And the reaction of Danny Brown and the producers says it all because Danny Brown didn't even have an answer. He just laughed and moved on to the next subject while the producers were laughing in the background. And although comments like that might not sound like a big deal, keep in mind that Call Her Daddy at some point was one of the biggest podcasts out there. And the whole thing fell apart after they did Logan Paul's podcast and he started asking them about money and the split, with, uh, the split they had with Barstool. And after that, they all it all fell apart they left bar stools and they even left each other the the two that were hosting the podcast and like i said steve -O has mentioned himself that he is into all the drama and all the dumb lore that has been covered in this channel i'm not saying he watches the channel but he's definitely aware of all that and in fact he was pretty ruthless to brennan Schaub last year when all of that was happening to him so that's like yeah. really really easy no airports in the arlington where gringo poppy was filmed Wait, is that where is that where that was filmed? <laughs> is it the, the the Dallas Improv Arlington? I think so. Yeah, that's where Gringo Poppy was filmed. Oh, no, Dude, tough act to follow. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure's on. <laughs> Oh man, how do you know that? How do you know that was filmed there? Um, I was fascinated by the entire <laughs> <laughs> I even know where the construction paper came from. <laughs> oh my god. I even know who cut it out. <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. Yeah, <laughs> we all are. We're all very fascinated about it. It was fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just like, I'm particularly close to that because of the known for other things coming into stand up. Like, um, first special on Showtime, you know, yeah. and then like uh, putting out the second special on, on you know, yeah. on, your on your own. 35 minutes. 25. It was it really? It was 25. Oh. My goodness. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's yeah. interesting. It's like, uh, 
it's like death by a thousand self-inflicted paper cuts or something it's, like yeah, that. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty intense. Now, obviously, in terms of fame and selling tickets, yes, Tivo is way bigger than Brendan Schaub and way more successful. However, when it comes to actual stand-up comedy, you know, being funny and writing bits, I don't know if Steve is that much better than somebody like Brendan Schaub. For example, he's still doing a lot of pretty well stunts and his stand-up comedy is heavily influenced by his jackass days. I actually consider Steve more of a podcaster than a stand-up comic, not in a bad way. I mean, I still don't remember one single Steve joke that I've ever heard but I do remember a few podcast episodes that I've seen. I mean, the good thing is that Steve-O actually recognizes that and he's able to take a joke because there is no denying that he had a way easier path than anybody else. He was a famous superstar before stand-up comedy and I believe his dad was the CEO of Pepsi or some huge company like that. So definitely a lot easier than other people and he doesn't hide uh, behind the fact that you know, like Tom Segura saying that he used to be poor and uh, saying that money did not help his weight loss journey. Uh, a black box theater is like a, a theatrical venue. Like, uh, you know, it's like a place where you watch Shakespeare and to ah, juxtapose that. It's where people perform when they start stand up if they're not already worldwide famous, Steve O. <laughs> uh, <it's> where, right. <laughs> if they're not a giant movie star and you start an art forum, you perform in a black box theater. So. That was a great joke. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that is true. Now, back then, you could argue that Brendan Schaub was steve -O's competition, and they had a similar start in stand-up comedy, but now it seems like steve -O is going after uh, people like Tom Segura and Burt Kreischer and actually competing with them in terms of ticket sales and touring and all that stuff. Because when it comes to YouTube, they're actually pretty close in terms of views and size of their channel. Obviously, Steve-O has a massive channel with over 6 million subscribers, but he does come from movies, so the size there is a little bit unfair to compare. Now, something I think is very interesting is the fact that at their level of fame and money, there's not that many ways that they can actually show off or flex because, you know, they can all afford the same expensive cars, the big houses, and they can afford to uh, rent private jets. But the only thing left they have is to show off how many tickets they sell or the size of the venues in order to boost their ego. And who, who makes more money? You're Tom. Uh, You're selling more. No, no. Bigger I mean, no, I, mean I, 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 I should don't shut know. up because no, I love no, no. him and he'll, he'll eviscerate me. Probably. No, no. Tom has his, I think his podcast, Your Mom's House, is very right. profitable. I don't think he's touring right now. So it's like, it's anytime anyone's touring, I definitely do bigger venues than he does. Oh, really? Yeah, he knows that. Okay, good. The, uh, he doesn't, he's done an arena. I do arenas. <laughs> so like, whereas Tom has done an I, arena. Uh, one here, he, he's primarily, his comfort level's theaters. That's where he really can sell right. tickets. One truck. Yeah, not I, even. Oh. I, I have like five semis Six. and three tour buses. Yeah, right, right, right. He has... Is two bears, does it do bigger numbers than your mom's house? Um, about, about the same? They vary. I mean, like some weeks um, your mom's house will do better, some weeks two bears. I think the um, consistently. They're both huge. They're both, they're both pretty big. They're both pretty big. I mean, the yeah, it just depends. I mean, they're, but they're both pretty solid, right. like big, big shows. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Bert's got to feel a little bit sad about how Bert cast does compared to. No, it's not even close. Yeah, yeah no. it's, it's, does Bert fly private? Yes, a lot. Yes, but I fly a much better aircraft. <laughs> I, I, I bet. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, I'm on your, I'm on your guys' heels, man. I've been. Uh, Dude, when you um. I've been I've been um doing theaters where even like Bert's coming up, you know, like yeah, yeah, like uh, let me the, the, the electric signs like Steve O's tonight, like Bert's. You know? Yeah, next month. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm even in the mix on the same theater. That's rad, days. dude. Congratulations. Thank you. Super stoked. And once again, it's very interesting that all of them are comics, but instead of flexing or showing off how funny they are or the bits that they're writing, they're flexing what kind of jets they're flying in and the size of the venues that they're selling out. And this kind of ties into the last video where we talked about comics like Tom Segura essentially taking on so many projects and just chasing the money that they actually start slacking on the main projects that they, you know, that got them to where they are now. And uh, we talked about Tom Segura dropping the ball in front of Louis C.K. and then Quentin Tarantino. And now Steve-O is basically doing the exact same thing as Tom Segura. Steve-O has also been expanding and doing a lot of things lately, and he will definitely push anything that he can sell. 
like the time that he was on the Joe Rogan experience and tried to push flushable wipes, which got completely destroyed by Joe Rogan. And once again, similar to Tom, it feels like Steve was now just doing all these podcasts as a job and as a way to advertise what he has to sell instead of as a way to have an interesting or funny conversation with somebody that he likes or finds interesting. When I'm creating, like before it was almost just like a, let me hurry up and do this shit so I can go get up you yeah, know what yeah, i'm saying sure. and now it's like i'm actually enjoying the process of just being in the studio or even being on stage that created like it became almost like therapy for me man and what do you do on stage I'm, i do music you do music mm -hmm. nice man yeah it's it's silly dude now i think we can all agree that steve o going on danny brown's show and asking him to his face what he did on stage was pretty wild and we have to call it out because, well, I'm not going to pretend, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I, I've known Danny Brown for a while and have listened to all his music because I haven't. But when I saw that he was a part of YMH Studios, I looked him up and found out that he was actually a very talented and entertaining and funny guy. And I've mentioned this in the last video, but what he was doing or what he's doing now is very impressive to pull off a solo podcast on somebody else's network and pull the, the numbers that he was doing. And once again, Steve-O asking that one simple question just made it seem like he didn't really care to look up the podcast that he, that he was going to and uh, was just treating it like a small a smaller version of a Tonight Show appearance where he doesn't really care about the, about the host and he's just there to promote what he has to promote. And keep in mind that out of all the interviews that Steve-O did, Danny Brown was the only person to actually watch the full special that he was there to promote. Everybody else like Bradley and uh, Burt Kreischer told him to his face that they just watched either the trailer or the first seven minutes and that they were going to finish it later, which obviously, obviously they're not. You know, I, I know what human nature is. I don't want to be like, you know, a greedy guy. I don't want to be like, you know, but at the same time, like I am subject to the laws of of, of human nature and I hate it because like as I become like more successful and I'm now I'm at a point where I've got all kinds of people whose livelihood is on my shoulders you know yeah. I've got like payroll for all kinds of people you yeah. know warehouses and staff and like yeah. like my whole mentality about that has been like yeah like hook everybody up super generous and like through like this last Jackass movie, man, all my it just went through the roof. Like my touring, yeah. Like uh, I mean, I'm I bought my own tour bus. I'm going to huge, doing shows in big ass theaters and yeah. making all kinds of money all over the place. And then since the interest rates went up, like we've seen like people's expendable income really dry up, you know. Yeah. And so then, yeah. so now like money is is uh like tougher to come by, like not as much revenue coming in, um, you know, tougher to sell tickets on tour, like, you know, tougher to sell merch online. And uh, it, the, the, the mother for me is that, like I said, dude, I was selling so much merch, I got my own warehouse. And then it was going so well, I added a second warehouse. Yeah. I've got like, I've got insane overhead, like fixed costs yeah, that it. are like, ridiculous now something else that makes steve-o's joke very interesting is the fact that he's very open about you know making very decent money during the last couple of years and from what it sounds like it sounds like he pays his em his employees very very well like more than everybody else from the from the sound of it so naturally the question is does tom segura pay his employees or producers very well because it would be pretty ironic if Tom Segura was making fun of, you know, poor people joking around while at the same time paying his own employees uh, minimum. Now, obviously, this is not a conversation about economics or whether producers are getting paid fairly or not, because that's a whole different conversation. But just keep in mind that podcasting as a business is very profitable. They make insane amounts of money just with YouTube alone, not, not thinking about uh, sponsors and uh, book sales and obviously tickets and all that stuff. Just from podcasting alone, it's a lot of money. Now, I'm not saying that a producer should get paid a ton of money. I don't even think they're that important to a, to a podcast, as messed up as that sounds. But if they are producing the shows, editing the shows, and making sure that they all get uploaded to the channel... And that's a whole different conversation. And then the money 
conversation would come into play. And also, if there was ever a situation where all the producers left the show, left YMH, I don't think it would be that damaging. They could recover pretty quick. However, it would be a clear sign that something is definitely wrong and that Tom Segura needs to reduce the things that he has going on because keep in mind that, yes, producing a lot of shows is uh, brings in a lot of money, but it is a lot of overhead, a lot of moving pieces, and a lot of people that have to get paid regardless of what, what's going on. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. Leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. It helps out so much, and I really appreciate that. Dislike if you didn't like the video, but that is all we have for today. See ya.